muscles and we call this motional EMF. Remember when you have a conductor that moves through a region of magnetic field, there will be voltage drop across the two terminals. <coughs> and there's EMF. In fact, if you connect a wire, current will flow. But if you don't have a wire, just a conductor by itself, the potential drop is still there. Okay, and this is called motional EMF. And can you remember the expression for motional EMF is B L V. Do you remember that? The voltage induced across the terminal of a conductor is B L V, where B is the magnetic field, where it's moving through. L is the length of the conductor and V is the speed. <coughs> okay? So in this case, we are going to use this equation to help us solve what is the EMF induced. Okay. So let's look at the whole picture again. <clears throat> Where is the magnetic field coming from? In fact, the magnetic field is generated by this very long wire. This very long wire that carries the current generates the magnetic field. Remember the right hand rule? So there will be B going in circular loop throughout the whole region. Okay. Now. On this plane, where the conductor exists, B will be pointing in. Remember, right hand rule. On this side, it will be pointing up. But this is not our concern. Our concern is here because that's where the conductor is. And that's the magnetic field experienced by this moving conductor. Okay? And remember that the magnetic field due to an infinitely long wire is given by this. Mu naught I divided 2 pi x. You can call it 2 pi r or 2 pi x. In that x or r refers to the perpendicular distance from the wire. Okay, so at a certain x, this is the v. At a different x, the v changes. So what we know in fact is that v is changing with the perpendicular distance. So when we are very near the wire, v is very strong. As we move more and more to the right, what happens? V drops, isn't it? Okay. Now, so this one tells you something. The B that this conductor is experiencing is not a constant B. It varies, isn't it? At one end and at the other end, the X value will be different. So the B will be changing. In fact, B changes continuously throughout the length of the conductor. Now, if because B is changing, we cannot straight away apply BLV. Because this one assumes there's a constant B. Isn't it? But by now you should be able to extend your calculus knowledge to see how we handle such a problem. Right? And the procedure is always the same. Divide your object into many infinitesimal elements. So we shall divide the conductor into many many small segments. <coughs> and let's consider a typical segment. Let's say this one shaded in purple. Let's say that its distance from the wire is X. And the width of this element is dx. <coughs> okay? Now, this element is a very small element, but dx is a very, very small number, almost nearly zero, isn't it? So at this point here, the b experienced by this element is a constant. It's just mu no i divided 2 pi x, whatever the x value, isn't it? So therefore, I can apply b l v to this small element. So I write down. <coughs> The voltage developed across that small element, which I call dV, or you may want to call it dE, doesn't matter. There's no standard notation for EMF to reduce. Huh? dV or dE, huh? up to you. Okay. So the voltage induced across a small element, I apply the same expression, is BLV. B will be the magnetic field at the distance x, which is this one. L is the length of this conductor in this case is the x and v is the speed of course the speed will be the same for all elements v so therefore i obtain the voltage induced on the small element and to obtain the voltage induced across the whole conductor what we need to do is that we integrate the dv because this is just like a small battery there's another element a small battery and when you connect them up in series Right. In fact, you just sum up the total voltage. That will give you the overall voltage. So, the total EMF induced is an integral of dV. And this integration will be performed from one end 
to the other end of the conductor. So at one end, you are given that the x is actually equal to r. That's the lower limit of the integration. At the other end, x is r plus l, the upper limit. So you substitute your dv inside here, integrate, put in the limit. In this case, this integration is not difficult, it's 1 over x. Okay, so you get a log x. Then you substitute the limits, therefore you get the answer. So this is the EMF induced across a conductor. <coughs> Is it okay? Any question? So this is the first part that you're asked to solve the EMF induced. <coughs>